Hello, Tom here. Just a quick review of some of the tools I use for my first leather project. It, most of these tools are from a startup kit. I did an unboxing video earlier, and now that I've actually used them to, in order to create something, it's more of an honest beginner review of some of these tools, particularly that kit. So I just wanna go over, I did use a pattern, and in order to make the pattern, I did cut it out using the X-Acto knife that came with the kit. It's sharp, it's small, it's about pen shaped, and it worked very well. The nice thing is it came with some spare blades. I keep it capped because it is sharp. So I'll be using that going forward. A couple of things, speaking of sharp, the little nippers, they're not the best plastic, but the blades do meet it very well. They're very smooth. And I use these in order to cut the thread. This thread is very waxed, almost like more wax than dental floss. It's about the best reference I can give, maybe more like a candle wick. I'm not sure if this is normal for leather, you know, working thread. However, it is what I have. It did work. And this is actually a pretty nice addition to the kit as well as the other colors that are available. Now, one of the things that was part of the kit and I was not too happy using, and it's my fault. I had my finger in the wrong place at the wrong time, is these needles. These needles have a very sharp chiseled edge and they come to a really, really sharp point. I'm not sure if these are typical leather crafting needles, but there's a whole bunch in the kit and th this seemed the appropriate size and those other ones are sharp as well. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more research and if you have a comment or recommendation on leather crafting needles that aren't so dangerous, I mean, for a 10 thumbs kind of guy like me, I appreciate that. Leave a comment below. Also, some of the items that were part of the kit was a punch. Now, I used this punch, and it went in fairly well because it does have nice little points on it, but when it came to pulling it out of leather, there was a little extra force that needed to be applied. It seems like there is a rough edge on the sides, and although the hammers does a very good job driving it in, myself trying to pull it out, it seemed difficult, so I had to use a bone tool in order to put some pressure onto the leather so that I could actually pull it out without like breaking the contact of the seam. The punch is nice. It seemed to work. I might just sand a little to try to make this a little bit smoother going forward. So this was a nice little tool for the kit. The bone tool was not part of the kit. That was a later addition I picked up myself since I seen a lot of the leather crafters have one. So I wanted to make sure I had one. So that I would hopefully believe that maybe part one should be included with a kit even if it's a plastic one so it's useful it breaks glue seams and opens up pockets and as i just told you it it holds the leather down as you're trying to remove the punch another tool that was fairly common to use i use it for uh tracing on the leather from the pattern and it it's sharp it's pointy it left a mark did not break so I'm very happy to have this and will, of course, continue to use that. Now, the punch. I use the punch in order to take the 90 degree angles and get rid of that sharp point that it comes to and make it a little bit rounder. So it reduces the stress on this point and it's less likely to tear the leather. And it has this little groove so the punch actually comes out as working through it. You can sharpen it. So I plan on using this going forward as well. Now, there was no sandpaper, but it did come with an emery board. So I used the emery board in order just to try to take off some of the fuzz from not straight, so straight cuts. So I'm probably gonna go over the sandpaper, but this actually did work and it was fairly straight. And when I used the table to guide, it kind of created a nice edge there. Now, one thing I did not use, but I do wanna talk about it again. It's this metal ruler. This came with the kit. It has no high friction surface, so it slides quite a bit. So this, I would not recommend this. Just, just from my experience with using a ruler I picked up and added to the kit, part of my tools, it has a, it has a caulk backing, so it stays fixed to the surface, so it's less likely to move, and a blade will stay true to the line that you want to cut it on. So this was not part of the kit, but it's definitely going to be a keeper. Now, the last thing that was part of the kit that seemed to be everything at once is this tool. Originally had a groover, it's a little hole in the blade to try to 
basically skim off a little bit of leather and create a visible groove. But I had taken this apart, removed the guide, removed the tip, and put the beveler edge in there, and I used it as a beveler. Then when I was done beveling, I rebuilt it, put the guide back in, but this time I put a little marking nub right here. It looks like a flathead screwdriver, just to basically create a stitch line so that I can use it as a punch. I think this was ingenious as far as that it can do so many things. However, I'm just going to probably get a beveler and I'm probably going to get a set of calipers for just, you know, marking stitch lines. I do believe that I'm just going to convert this back to the groover because it looked like that's basically what it's going to be designated for. It does work and it does manage to do so many things. However, it does seem to be a lot of little pieces in order to do so. Now, things that weren't part of the kit, but were effective. We already talked about the ruler, the straight edge. Hammer. Now, of course, this shouldn't come with the kit because let's think about it. Most of us have hammers at home. It's not the type of hammer you would expect for a leather crafter, but it did work. Hard surface for driving the punches, soft surface for setting the stitches. So this is part of my kit. Also, contact cement. There wasn't any in the kit, but this... It's okay because you can get a lot of contact cement and some people have glue at home. I think even if I use like a, a white glue just to hold the seams down, maybe clamp it to a dried till I punched and sewed it, that might have worked as well. But um, the contact cement's doing its job and this is what professionals use. So I'm going to stick with this for now. Now, of course, who can't pass up the opportunity to use some fire? Did not come with the kit, but it's a typical lighter. I see a lot of leather crafters using this or like what looks like a heating element, a little filament at the tip of a, like a stack of batteries. Right now, this is good. Not part of the kit, but I just want to say this was very helpful. I know I just wanted to cover all the tools and pieces that came with the original startup kit, but there were so many things that were not part of the kit that I end up using. So I just want to throw that in there just in case you're inspired to think about getting into the leather crafting. I've only done one project. Believe me, I... I'm already thinking about how I'm going to replace a lot of these tools. So a lot of these tools may have not been used or ever used or may have been only used once and then maybe retired forever. So I just wanted to get a quick review out before I do those steps. I just want to thank you for your time. If you have any comments about leather crafting, videotaping, editing, or just anything in general like safety, please leave a comment below. I appreciate your time and thank you.